Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the May 3rd meeting of the Hyde Park Planning Board. Please take note of the exits around the room and now join me as we salute the American flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Thank you. The first time on the agenda is a new public hearing for Hyde Park Town Center North. The application is for the, the addition of a ready coffee. I get a motion over the public hearing. So moved. Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion carries. Mr. Bird, do you have anything to add from the last time you guys were here? Um, well, um, since we're at a public hearing, just a little bit about it in case there's any from, from the public um, that wants to speak. What we're looking to do is the existing, uh, there's the existing pocket park in the town center mall, and we're looking to uh, put a, a freestanding ready coffee with the drive through in there, and then redo the, the park area, uh, maintaining the seating and creating, um, so creating the access from the walking path into the, into the plaza. Thank you. That was a pretty brief summation of what's been going around, around, and around. I don't believe there's any comments from consultants because we don't have anything new since the last meeting. Any comments from the board? I wanted to ask about the new information about um, some, we had not really considered traffic flow to the northernmost set of um, businesses. And I believe we heard from them. And so in considering this, we need to keep in mind that although they don't own or have any jurisdiction over that, those properties apparently they're using them for deliveries and other things so I wasn't I didn't quite understand uh, what the neighbors to the north were saying but it sounded like we're going to be impinging on their ability to to and get delivers. the delivers this would be the plaza that has a guacamole Excuse former me. former Hyde Park Pizza okay you're talking about the strip mall that's yeah, right. Basically, sure. it's from the light. Well, sort of like the strip malls that are in the, in the sites you're representing right now, too. <laughs> Sorry, that's hard to words. I what I referenced it as, like yeah. a grouping of stores. I mean, well, you know. you're talking about the, um, the the plaza that basically goes from the intersection south. Mm -hmm. oh, Correct. Okay. Um, anyway, yeah, I don't. We have not considered any of the flow movements. I don't. I don't believe that. that it, it, I don't believe that anything that we're doing right now on uh, any of the work we're doing in the plaza is really going to impede or change any of the traffic flow other than um, of, of the trucks coming in. You know, we haven't changed that entrance. So any truck that wants to come in to do the delivery, they can still, you know, if you look, they can still come in here, come up this way, and then head down this way to, her, to the back of that plaza. So the only difference, you know, the only difference is, is now anybody coming out of the drive through We'll have to, if there's a truck coming, we'll have to obviously stop and wait for the truck to pass. <clears throat> so, you know, the, I don't see how um, anything that we're doing is really going to interfere with the existing flow that's there. Okay, I, again, I, their, their statement was that it, it, it could, and no. I just think we had not considered this. No. It's a valid point, and I understand, but um, like I said, um, other than the people coming out of the drive through I know we haven't really altered the the path that the trucks would come in, you know, because this, you know, this is still, you know, they would still come down here and then turn this way down because they can't go through the TEG parking lot because, you know, there's a fence right here. Um, so they would have to either come down in here and come up or come through here and then come through. So, right. you know, and then once you get past this point, you know, a little bit past this, um, nothing in the existing parking area is changing. Um, and I'm, I'm not sure if our consultants had read that and could um, offer anything. Were they talking about the, the TEG access point? We didn't receive anything in writing. Someone came to look at the plan, um, didn't give his name, and was either oh. going to send someone here or, uh, or write a letter, which I always encourage them to do, and I did not receive one. Okay. And Sorry. I thought that they had specifically said something about closing one of the accesses that exists now. Well, yeah. Right. I think the I don't have a pointer that'll work here, but the issue is is that right now they come into the main entrance, mm -hmm. and they hook over where the where you would park opposite from Mavis. Mm -hmm. and they can just continue. Here? They can just continue straight on to go yeah. to the back of the plaza. So by 
uh, closing that just having the, nor the more easterly entrance. Um, they're probably going to, trucks will have to use the main entrance, or the main north-south driveway that goes in front of the new Board of Elections building, but and then take a left. Do they have an, remind me, do they have an easement? No. Okay. No, the, yeah, I think they're talking about this entrance that was being closed right here. Correct. That, that's yeah. basically okay. it. It's, so, it's but a short point that that's what they're doing. It's yeah. the shortest distance. But this one here is still open. So if they wanted to, they could pull in here and then come down this way. So I right. I, I, I still think there's, there's, there's plenty of access <coughs> points for them. They could also take a ride in on yeah. Pine Woods, come back the other way. There's, still, there's multiple entry points yes. into this. Yes. Without an easement, can we even consider that? Or it's really? interesting. Without a written formal easement, um, you know, they may have rights because they've been using it all these years, but mm. does that right mean they're entitled to the most convenient location or? Or any. Or any. So I can't answer that question. You know, they, they would have to come to us with some information showing that their rights are being impinged upon. And I just want to be honest that I hadn't even really considered. Right. I felt that they were removed from this, but just the comment, I was like, oh, no. It's kind of all intertwined back there. It's Everybody's all kind of sharing um, accesses and parking and everything else. I'm, I'm not even sure that without this parking lot there, if they would actually even be able to get deliveries. They can still get deliveries off Pine Woods. Yeah, but then aren't they going to be blocking? If they had to park on Pine Woods, it would be blocking Not the road. Not park on Pine Woods. They can yeah. come up Pine Woods yeah, no, no, right. and go inside to get to the back. There's mm -hmm. multiple points of yeah. entry and access here. Right. If you recall, when we were first re reviewing these kinds of applications of this site, it appears that back in the day, the Masudas, Malloys, and anybody else just had a handshake. Yes. That's mm -hmm. sort of what it was like back then. They didn't formalize access easements. So that's a good comment. And Ms. Whitman had told me that they came in, that the people came in to comment, and I said, please put that in writing, otherwise we really can't consider it as long as it's just a hearsay comment. Anyone else from the board? Would anyone from the public like to speak about this application? That's sort of what I assumed, so there being none, uh, we're waiting on comments back from county planning, who have until May the, I believe it's 19th, so should we adjourn this to the week after the make a motion to adjourn this to June 7th? I'll make that motion. Second. Thank you. All in favor, please say aye. 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 We'll see you in a bit. Okay. Thank you. See you in the next meeting. And thanks for coming out. Sorry that there was no public comment for you. Well, it's okay. Actually, that's probably better. <laughs> and, and they're working on their own revisions based on the board's comments at the last meeting. Right. I, I believe we, we submitted them. I believe what we submitted last week had taken into account all the comments. But I'll check. I'll verify that. Uh, we have nothing since the last meeting, oh, and no? I believe that there is there is discussion about losing one additional parking space to accommodate some of the planning board members' interests. Oops. You're still showing four, not three. Um, yeah, these are from four four. Sorry, I, I don't have anything. Okay, because I know I submitted to... Okay, I'm going to have to find out. Now I'm confused. Amy's behind you. I know. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna, we're going to have a conversation because I'm a little do. confused now. Thank <laughs> you, Mr. Bird. It's good to <laughs> see you as always. See you at the next meeting. I was, yeah. was going to say, I think what was submitted was some calculations for a couple of the items where there was a question where there may or may not be a variance. So well, that's that information was submitted, but I don't think we've seen that the That was plans. on the windows because I know I submitted some revised drawings on yeah. the 30th, I think it was. Oh, we don't have them. The 20, whatever, last Friday, I think it was. No? Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll find out. Thank you. If not, we'll have them in before for the next meeting. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is a continued public hearing for Bellafield Phase 2 subdivision. Make it a motion to reopen the public hearing. So moved. Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Would anyone, Mr. Boudreau, do you want to come up and speak about that? You don't need to. We've had no information, no nothing new. Any comments from the consultants or the board? We've been opening and continuing this as a courtesy to the applicants. It appears as though they're not going to be. So I have a question for you, Mr. Boudreaux. Please come up. Yep. Why am I adjourning this to June 7th? We're going to submit the um, plat uh, May 16th or so, three, three, two, two or three weeks. Do you mean phase 2A? Yes, phase 2A. The site plan? Yep. Okay, then because otherwise you'll be you're going to be changing the subdivision plat along with the new application for the new portion of the site plan. Right. I'm correct. Right. Okay. 
Make a motion to adjourn this to June 7th. So moved. Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Looking aye. forward to seeing that application. Okay. Yeah. Right. Just confirming there was no one here. Oh, uh, well, there's nobody here. To, I recognize everybody, whether that's good or bad. <laughs> For the record. Okay. For the record. Okay. Members of the public were able to speak. All right. The next item is a workshop Thank item. Thank you. Clinton Institute of America, the applicants are seeking approval to renovate in a major way the north and south entry gates, also relocate uh, one of the guard houses, and a few other minor improvements. This is the first time th this full board has seen the application, so Mr. Sloan is here, and I'll turn it over to you. And by the way, in advance, thank you for providing the, the updated master plan. Hello, I'm Michael Sloan from Sloan Architects. So this, this project is for the um, Culinary Institute of America. Um, we would like to propose building new entryways to the campus on their two uh, entries off of Route 9. Um, currently there now is just the, um, there's a your typical High Park bluestone wall along the uh, Route 9, and there is a Culinary Institute signage at both entrances. Um, this project is actually about um, improving the entrances um, to be more in keeping with the the campus of the culinary and the status of the culinary. Um, I can actually let me just give everybody a, an idea of what it looks like before we get into the plans. So this is the <laughs> south entrance for the um, the campus. Um, it is a one-way entrance at the, at the street light. Uh, th as you will see, the, we are proposing architecture that is in keeping with the campus. It is utilizing the bricks, the limestone, the copper cupolas that you will find on the campus. It's kind of like a little foreshadowing of what's to come on the campus. It's the, on the North entrance. Again, it's similar in design, except it doesn't have the archways because there's al there's a already existing crosswalks and sidewalks. So we're letting we're actually extending the sidewalks from Route Nine back into campus. So they'll connect pedestrian-wise um, that whole area of the campus to the the, the development across the street and um, just better pedestrian access that we want to encourage. The this design is also showing, as you mentioned, the rebuilding the guardhouse that's currently there, but we're actually moving it back from Route 9 to allow more cars to stack when there is an event on campus. Um, part of this, this important to note about this project is we're not changing traffic circulations or patterns at all. The DOT entryways are still the same DOT entryways. Uh, this is more about the walls, the signage, and the um, just the beautification of the entryways. I mean, the one benefit in terms of circulation besides the pedestrian is moving the guardhouse back so more cars can prevent from backing up onto Route 9. Um, the, one of the th aspects of this project is they currently, on the south entrance, when the rest campus at certain times when it's closed they do close this gate even currently today um, so we're, instead of having saw horses put across we're actually coming up with a nice iron a black steel gate to look like you know an old iron traditional gate with decorative scrolls and all you'll see in the drawings um, there is another part of this project is you don't see it in this rendering but there will be currently there's a, a sign that says restaurants um, we're actually proposing a a wooden sign that you'll see in the drawings that actually flips out when the restaurants are open and then folds away so you don't even see it when the restaurants are closed. Um, the, the lighting of this 
currently it is just the typical um, street light at these entryways currently today. We're actually um, re redoing the street lights in terms of at this entryway, we're actually taking the two street lights that are just behind where we're proposing these two gates down, and we're actually only doing subtle landscaping uplights of the signage and the and the brickwork um, at this entryway. The um, just so that it's a nice kind of even glow at, in the evening with shielded um, landscaping lights. On this entryway, we are adding um, a, a few street lights because the street lights do not come out to the Route 9. So for the pedestrians, we're just using the same street lights that the campus ha has all throughout campus just to make sure the pedestrian walkways are, are lit. Again, there would be just some su in, in the flower bed some uh, sign lighting that lights up the um, signage that's going to be mounted, the letters mounted onto the brick wall. Mr. Sloan, what's the height of those poles that you're adding? When you say the pole, you mean the, 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 the gate tower? The light Ears? poles that you... Oh, the light poles. They're, they're t t from, from grade to the bottom of the canopy where the light is sources is 12 feet. Okay. Thank you. The, so on, on the site plan at the south entry, the, the one one aspect that we are adding once we get past the DOT curb cuts, we are incorporating um, what we'll call rumble strip of cobblestones. So these couple stones do a few things. One, these are set into um, filled groundwater so that they have the uh, permeable pavers, we'll call it, so that there's drainage system underneath the cobblestone so that it'll filter through it in the different layers of different coursing of stones underneath. The also you'll see here is what this little um, smaller radius is and, and is basically a turnaround for a car. So if a car comes in off hours and which currently cars do do today, they'll have the room to maneuver to get back out onto Route 9 without backing into Route 9. Mm. The this is the a new sidewalk. Right now, the sidewalk goes up. There's a sidewalk at the little chapel that's there, but we're going to connect Route Nine to that sidewalk to kind of bring again any pedestrians that come across at this entryway back into campus. There will be, in both. No North entrance and south entrance, there will be seasonal flower beds that will be changed for the seasons. At the north entryway, um, as I mentioned, the roadway itself is not changing. The, the same basically design of the, the flower beds and the signage will still be similar to the south entryway. Here's where the existing, or the arrow is the existing gatehouses, and we're pushing it back to here. We're still having the, the um, security gates that are currently, <coughs> that they use. Um, we're actually making this one motorized at the gatehouse. Um, there is. There's one now, is there, there's not one now, the gatehouse yeah. is just horses. Just horses, yeah. So we're gonna have a card reader here, um, so that when staff comes in, or students come in, that when it's closed, they can still get in. Um, there is also the provisions for the fire department to get in both entrances um, for when there's an emergency on campus. So when a campus emergency is activated, these gates will open. We have to add the fire department. Um, and again, this, this is the sidewalk that comes up and brings the students or any pedestrians coming up onto campus up to this sidewalk that's here. These are just enlargements of the dimensions. 
construction details. This is the light picture that you asked about. This is the, the 12 foot oh, I said that height. Right there. Again, instead of being, this is the architectural drawings for, for future construction of the project as opposed to the, re the nice renderings. Here you can see the restaurant sign out when it's in the open position, when the gates are open. And when the gates are closed, the sign folds back. And just put it actually is going to fold away behind the pier completely. In terms of, so in terms of color, the, the fences will be black. The, we have the little Culinary Institute mm -hmm. and we have um, logo, it, you know, embossed into the, made into the gate. <coughs> nice little features. Um, again, the, the guard house would be, again, taking on the same architectural language as the, as the gates now. Instead, suppose right now it's just a little white shack, <laughs> so to speak. <laughs> with a copper roof and a little um, finial, coupe, finial on top, um, again, with the brick and the stone base. We'll also be having um, large precast concrete planters for security reasons in terms of cars hitting the yes. gatehouse, mm -hmm. protecting the nice <coughs> copper roof. <coughs> so that's the, the drawings. And and we, I do have to mention we will be going for a variance too for this project because of where these gates are proposed between the setbacks and the property line. In addition, it's the number of signs that you're requesting? And the number of signs, and exactly in the height. And board members, particularly for the newer ones, sometimes the ZBA asks for recommendations, sometimes they don't. I can't quite figure out uh, on variances, but be prepared if we do to uh, make comments on that. I said it earlier before kind of you were hearing me, but I want to thank you both for providing the master plan updated uh, as Ms. Moss was requesting. Also, remember, Waters and I have been meeting with you guys off and on on this, and we I, I'm going to go ahead and just say that Rob and I have said in, over and over again that we think the board will like the aesthetic upgrade to this, because who wouldn't? It's an improvement to our town. Uh, particularly, this is a kind of a stunning improvement. I'll also add that uh, there's no change to the permanent landscaping, but the client does an excellent job of doing it the seasonal beds, updating them, keeping them weed free, et cetera. So we all also want to thank the culinary for maintaining a gorgeous entrance to our town. Let me start with our consultants. Ms. Franson, any comments? Uh, I did. I, I wanted um, some clarification on the gate to the south. Is that going to be left open and only closed similar to the way that it's done now, or were you changing in any way sort of the security aspect of it and closing it more frequently no my understanding it'll be operating the same way it does today okay thank you and That's thank you John. Okay. John, can you just come sit up at the front so we can hear you um, you have the sculptural element at the north <coughs> entrance that's to be determined so whatever's being rendered that's that may or may not be what's there. Yeah, so I have in the, the black and white drawings, we just have a, a zone that gives a height and a width and the depth of it so that there's an artist being commissioned to come propose, which we haven't seen yet, okay. um, the designs for this sculpture. So um, it was a little unclear to me. You have the existing drawings and then you have the proposed drawings. And there's some things being added, for instance, the sidewalk that's going to go internal at the north entrance. And you have trees there, landscaping, and it's a little unclear if anything's being removed as far as either landscaping and then replanted, um, or for instance, any existing stone walls to be able to put the new wall in, do you have to remove some? So kind of the interface between the improvements and what's there, especially trees, um, it was a little unclear if anything had to be removed. No, it's actually lawn just in those strips right along directly adjacent to the road. Um, it, you go about, about 10, 15 feet back, mm -hmm. then you have, a, you have your start, your, your trees and your plantings and that the culinary has. Okay. Yeah, it looked very tight, so that's why in looking at the image, um, the tree trunks relative to where the sidewalk is right. um, looked a little tight, so I didn't know whether it was really going to fit. Um, I don't know what the what the space is between the tree trunk mm -hmm. and the curb, and if you can fit the sidewalk in. Yeah, no, it it, it fits. I've you know, we've walked the site many times. Um, 
the yeah on the on the north e so on the south entrance there's nothing in the way um, the there is I'm trying to think on the um, we're not putting on the south entrance on the north side of the south entrance there's not going to be a sidewalk okay um, there's right now on the south entry there is a what I believe a water meter pit we're, we're actually leaving that un we're not touching that okay so the whole structure will be but there is this I'll call it Adirondack watering well type structure over it which will be removed okay um, it was a little difficult to make out the bollard um, detail so I don't know if they're similar to whatever else might be on the campus uh, so you so could tell the pole and there was a a detail or a reference to the lighting yeah so at the turnaround the south entrance we have four bollards being installed that are similar to the ones on campus that's just so when a car's backing up it gives them an indication that don't back up too far and hit the curb that's really what that's for okay um and then leds i didn't see anything with regard to kelvin value we like to do softer colors if you're using led lights yeah, they would not, it would definitely be softer. The whole idea would be like a park-like image. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be like 27K. Okay. It's going to be very warm. Okay. Yeah, That's that could be added as a sort of part of the standards. Sure. Uh, and those are my initial comments. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Ms. Frenson knows I spent, when I was laid up, I spent four hours going through LEDs and Kelvin <laughs> values, et cetera. <laughs> That's a trip. <laughs> Believe me, I actually spoke to Mr. Veith because he's an electrician and deals with lighting all the time. It was actually from the head of our former High Park Lighting Commission. Um, the LED lights, if they're cheap, they're cheap, and the color won't remain because there's actually, a, they're like little computers, there's not a filament anymore, right. which I hadn't realized. Um, and it appears as though, if I was reading correctly, that to really get a nice bulb that's going to last the lifetime that, it's ex that it says it's going to without changing color, you got to spend about twenty fourteen to twenty four dollars a bulb, which I hadn't realized before. Um, so if you're getting the discount ones, it's going to be harsh, horrible light, like in a refrigerator, freezer, or maybe a morgue the entire time. The, 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 the sales reps come to our office. I'm lecture, sure lecture us on this all the time. I, I, again, <laughs> one thing that I took away from it though is that LED lighting is continuing to improve. Yeah. Um, one of the members of the Illuminating Society. Uh, at some of the learning society at one point said just take if you if they get old just take and go to your drugstore and take uh, amber nail polish and just coat everything inside it and I was like that's not a solution <laughs> so at any rate um, I now appreciate the warmth of the values that we're talking about 2700 is warm if you get to 5000 it's harsh that's when you're in the morgue and the freezer so thank you uh, Ms. Moss any comments Before we, um, the next iteration of the plans, I think the road names aren't right. <laughs> Chive Court and whatever the other one was, I, I thought it was something different. I it, Campus Drive. Campus Drive and something else. Parsley Lane. Parsley Lane. I can, I can check that. We can check that. Okay. They, I got them from the surveyor, so okay. <laughs> <laughs> they were wrong, I'm wrong. <laughs> It's no big deal. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Bono. Correct with that. We'll check. <laughs> we couldn't find a chive. That's the reason why. So I know where Parsley is. Ms. Polidoro, comments? Uh, we have a resolution prepared tonight to refer this to county planning, um, also to send it to DOT and to Roosevelt Fire District. And should this go to the fire department since we're changing the entrance? Yes. <laughs> so I have to add that to the resolution as a courtesy referral. Yeah, we just tack that on to the end. Thank you. And um, uh, under Seeker, there's actually an exemption for expansion of educational facilities by up to 10,000 square feet. So I believe this fits within it, the size of the walls. So we have a resolution to classify it as type 2. We're going to say it does fit in there because it is less than 10,000 square mean, feet. I mean, I, I measured, but I'm confirming. So just to make sure that you agree with that, that it's less than 10,000. This is the easiest way we could find to make sure it was a type 2. So thank you. Well, it, it fits. It fits. There's not <coughs> much, I mean, this is an aesthetic upgrade. It's not as though you're creating new structures that will create new traffic generation or anything else. It's probably going to delight the eyes of visitors as well as uh, passers, passers by. Let me start to my left. Mr. Reith, any comments? Uh, no, great project. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Waters? 
Yeah, I, uh, first of all, thank you. It's uh, proportioned, appropriate, keeping with the historic nature. Thoughtfulness for all the detailed features, structurally, aesthetically, safety, and security. Thank you. Well, thank you. Nice. Thank you. High praise coming from him. Right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Vice Chair Dexter. No additional comments. Vice Chair Oliver. No additional comments. Thank you. Mr. Garcia. No comments. I kind of told you this, that you would hear nothing but positive comments up here because it really is beautiful. You've done a fantastic job of, how, what was your term, giving a foreshadowing of the architecture you will see within? Mm -hmm. That's a good way to put it because you now, this matches better. When you said the typical Hyde Park stone walls, we're proud of our stone walls here, but this is a little bit more grand and it does seem to fit the magnificence of the property that you see behind you, with the exception of the Eastern European dormitories, which I hope will one day be improved. Um, Duly noted, and I concur. <laughs> <laughs> well, they, I was looking at pictures today, and I thought, ooh, when you see that, that's become an eyesore now. So it, it, thank heavens it's on the left and kind of tucked in. But on some of the Google Earth pictures, you can still see it. Um, so we, <laughs> it's, it's a shame to see it, put it that way. So um, the, the, they will be going to. Uh, the ZBA has pointed out for variances. So now we have a resolution prepared to uh, classify the action and do courtesy referrals as well as referral to, to county planning. And I believe this is Mr. Oliver's. Yep. Resolution classifying the action and referring to the Dutch County Planning and Development. CIA North and South Entrance Gates. Resolution number 2023-23. Whereas, 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 whereas. Now therefore be resolved that the planning board hereby one classifies the project as a type two action under SECRA. Two, refers the application of the Dutch County Department of Planning and Development pursuant to Section 239M of the General Municipal Law. And three, directs the Secretary to provide a courtesy copy of the application to the New York State Department of Transportation and the Roosevelt Fire District. <laughs> Is there a second? So moved. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any nays or abstentions? The motion carries unanimously. We're not going to set a public hearing yet, as you saw. Earlier with Ready Coffee, we're not sure they're going to hear much public comment other than if anybody bothered to say anything, it'd be, hallelujah, you look great. Um, and because if we open a public hearing, then it costs you money each time that we reopen and adjourn. So once you're through uh, with ZBA, you're going to have to go through a public hearing as well. So that's two meetings, and they only hold their meetings once a month. So you have two months to go. So once you're through, or once you're getting through or nearing with the, Z the Zoning Board of Appeals, just let us know, and we can go ahead and schedule uh, just a workshop or just an other business item here you have to come and we'll set a public hearing once you have that, once you're further along and have an idea of what they're going to say. Okay, Doug? Sounds good. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, and thanks for coming here tonight to make the presentation. Sure. We'll see you shortly. Good luck with the ZBA. Thank you. Next item on the agenda, Marco's Chalk Residence. This is application for site plan approval to replace a single family residence. It's located at 16 Papinga Lane, which is a private road. You can reach this by going down Scenic Drive, going all the way down to the end, and then looking for a hidden entrance. That's Papinga Lane and taking a right. Um, but I don't believe that the members of the public are actually allowed. We had a meeting at last time where um, Mr. Andros, subsequently to our first initial application, um, requested certain waivers. I want to make sure everybody had a chance to go through all those tonight. Um, Mr. Zotero is not here, but one of the things that Mr. Or one of the ish items that Mr. Andrews requested a waiver on was some of the stormwater stuff, or some other stuff, some of the stormwater management techniques. I'll put it that way. And Mr. Zotero said, "Yes, waive it because you're going to have an ESC, and you're on the river. You can't flood out any of the other properties around you." So uh, I believe that unless the board had an issue with any one of the waiver requests, those are all granted. Um, the other issues we want to set a public hearing for tonight, for May 17th, does that comport with what you wanted to do, Mr. Andrews? That's, that's what I would propose. I mean, I Kidoke? Um, any comments from consultants? I don't know. Or the board? No. Make a motion. Wait, wait, yes. Sorry, we're just talking about whether... There's Mr. Sotero looking fancy. A question about whether at the end the easements <coughs> should be shown on the plan that are shown on the subdivision plan. So you want, I know, I'm sorry, that's right, that's a waiver that was requested, and Ms. Polidoro, you prefer to have the easements shown on the site plan rather than the plat because you have to refer back to the plat? Well, I mean, that them? was that was my recommendation, but an, I don't know if Ted had a recommendation on that. Easements are required to be shown uh, on the site plan. However, I think they just come into the property 
I don't think they travel travel through the property. Is that correct? The access easement. Uh, which uh, we <coughs> we have a site plan. Yes. And um, where are you? How do you access the property? And a scenic drive. There's an easement. There's an easement. Okay. Yes. So I think that's it's on the subdivision map. Right. And it, can we at least show where that connection is to the property? I mean, your map doesn't go all the way to Scenic Drive. That's for sure. But where it touches the property and you, you oh, have 50 from feet or 200 feet around the edge that is to be shown, can can the connection point of the easement be shown? I could. I mean, rather than have that, rather than have that change now, though, I think what you we, we, that could be a condition ultimately of approval to, to show fine. the access point where it's hitting on the pro property. Yeah, that's fine. And okay. Then yeah, we'll work. Map. We'll work that out. That that's pretty easy to do, but it because it doesn't traverse the property. It's just the access to get to it. It might even be a note, so that's something that can be done at the end. Okay. Yeah, and the, the there's also a detailed description in the deed. Anything else? And you were going to. And Pete, do you want to weigh in about why you think it's okay to wave stormwater? Uh, sure. Well, uh, waving words like in your mouth in your absence. That's why. <laughs> uh, well, uh, waving uh, like stormwater is, uh, you know, the project is right at you know the Hudson, so it's not like it's going to impact any, you know, neighbors, and it's basically uh, a rebuild of what's you know there now, and uh, we are going to review. Pete had submitted an erosion and sediment. Um, control plan so I don't remember if there was any roof leader shown on there you probably don't really even know where they're gonna be yet do you where what roof leaders yeah we don't, I don't know you yet. don't know that yet so I mean somebody will just have a detail for like a splash I, I'm, I'm right. sure I'm sure they're gonna do something with the roof leaders but yeah I, I think I made a comment in, in an email to Tad about that that um, you know it would be it would be discharged on the ground not directly into the river yeah so we'll just so we'll just go make sure of that when we, when we review the erosion sediment control plan. <coughs> Thank you. Any other comments from the board? Did did the architect ever resolve the screening of the windows? I mean, how he was going to handle um, that? I'm I'm not sure. Okay. Well, if he, if he was here, I had I had some thoughts. I know that you did have some issues or questions. Well, no, it was just that questions. the Palopi, the IPA is very heavy. It but is. I had some, maybe I had some possible solutions for that that I'd share. Well, with maybe, him. maybe, maybe you can share them with him at the public hearing. Yes. If you'd like to hear them before ahead of time, he's welcome to contact Mr. Waters directly. Mm -hmm. Right. Anything else from the board? Okay. Let's set the public hearing. Make a motion to set the public hearing for May seventeenth. So moved. Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 We'll see you on the 17th. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is Bellafield Phase 2 Final Development Plan. We're discussing tonight, there's three conditions that remain before uh, the chair or his designee can sign the Final Development Plan sheets. Um, one is, of course, the, that the Planning Board accept the utility plan. The other is that we accept the sign design manual. And last would be the SWIP is reviewed and approved. So we have a utility plan sheet and we had a memo from Mr. Sotero. I contacted Mr. Sotero today and said, I don't know how we turn those comments into conditions. It seems to me as though you need to go back. Have you had a chance to review the his memo, Larry? Y yes, and, and um, uh, the utility plan comments have been addressed and we should get those back to Pete on Friday. Wow. Yeah. That was fast. Yeah, yeah. So then, once Mr. Zotero, if he, if they've all been addressed, gives us the go ahead, then I th I think we can all then say that we're okay with the utility plan. But some of them were very open ended. To put it mildly. Uh, yeah. I mean, um, uh, there were some cleanup things in okay. regards to. Um, uh, there were several of the storm structures that had too many pipes that were coming into one like structure, and you can't physically you know, make that like structure because there won't be anything left of the structure after you make the holes. So, um, and uh, it was just more you know, like labeling of the um, all, you know, the stormwater like basins that are on the site. 
the outlet the outlet piping from uh, each of the stormwater basins and then I'm just trying to look through see if there's any stormwater basins the out you know several of the structures too many pipes um, and just you know like some labeling so um, <coughs> I don't think you've reviewed the sign manual stuff, right? Uh, no, that's for ne that's the next part right. of this discussion. So I know some of your comments were that some pipes seem to just stop. Mm. Some didn't show connections. Yeah, there was some. There was there was one. There was one down by the um, down by the bigger stormwater basin down by uh, nine. That there was one section of pipe that wasn't shown like going anywhere. So. Uh, and then you had several structures that couldn't be precast. Yeah, that was that was what I mentioned. If they've before. been able to answer that, that's all that matters. Yeah. When we see that, when we see the response, put it that way. Yeah. Then for the sign manual, has everyone had a chance to review it? Ms. Moss has not. I have. So um, let me first. I believe that you want to do a presentation tonight for the board. So let me turn it over to you. Yeah. Please use the microphone because we're being recorded and taped. Thank you. It's good to see you again, Grace. Thank you very much, everyone. We go to short people. Um, so begin with the concept that the historic town of Hyde Park, because of its history, its architecture, its stone walls, um, it gave us a lot of inspiration for what we intended to do here. Um, this manual talks primarily about the village neighborhood, which is the bulk of phase two, um, and <coughs> pardon me, um, we have gone through and designed some very specific uh, wayfinding signs and also given um, some way for future tenants to view their express their personality within the village neighborhood so um, the first sign that we're going to talk about um, I have pictured for you um, if I may because it's the entrance sign um, on page 12 yep. so considering that the sign as I am referring to it the sign is on an existing structure or what will be existing um, we would like to welcome people by giving them the logo of Bellafield um, we have dimensional letters and their logo um, and we have it lit with your lovely warm lighting <laughs> um, Yes, I agree. Uh, I have 3,000 Kelvin, but you know, we could bring it down if you prefer. Um, so that sign, um, I think it's a, a lovely welcome to the property. As we go through, um, I have other wayfinding signage listed. This is a... Um, more of a directional sign if you will we have uh, multiple areas of the property and also some of the larger tenants um, pad sites the hotel that we'd like to make sure everyone can find and it this sign is meant to be viewed by both pedestrians and vehicular traffic so it needs to be reasonably substantial you want to give people the opportunity to make their turns um, there the plan was to use a stone wall um, slightly higher though than 
um, what is on the rest of the property. It serves a dual purpose. It screens the pump station behind it and also gives us a nice backdrop for the signage. It is integrated with the wall in front of it and softened with some plantings. Um, we have also a more of a development sign, more of a real estate development sign that uh, will go at the corner of um, nine in West Dorsey. It will also be on a stone wall. Um, this will be uh, halo illuminated channel letters. Um, we feel that'll be a nice soft a nice soft light for you. But it will still call out that you have arrived at Bellafield. And in addition, we know that we will need some other wayfinding signs as people are going through the property. Um, we wanted to propose this to you as a way to get people to the right place and also to give them an idea of what else might be here that they haven't considered. So um, we have, again, featured the stone wall and some wood planking. Um, we intend to make the individual sign panels also from wood or the look of wood. So those would be the signs that you would see as you're coming in. We do have on um, page three, if you might, generally about the uh, village neighborhood signs, the retail businesses that are um, on a main street. Mm -hmm. We would like to be able to give them different sign types. These will help with um, vehicular traffic as well as pedestrian traffic. We want people to find the business on the street. So we have included a primary wall sign, a blade sign, and window signage. Um, I give an example of an allowed combination 20 square foot wall sign with letters or logo that do not exceed 16 inches in height, a 12 square foot double-sided projecting blade sign. Now this sign shall not project more than four feet from the face of the building as your code talks about in other locations. I think this is pretty similar to um, what is generally allowed. Um, and some window vinyl, which would be a total of 37 and a half square feet. Um, the typical storefront is 25 feet long. So we are thinking that one and a half times the length of a storefront up to 100 square feet is what most businesses should, what businesses should be allowed to ask for. Discussing the primary wall sign because you're going to see some examples of what um, a primary wall sign is any sign attached to the facade of a building. One building mounted primary wall sign is permitted for each establishment's facade that fronts a public street, an alley, or planned pedestrian area such as a park or a common gathering space within this project. Businesses within the village neighborhood with a separate external entry may erect no more than one wall sign per exterior wall of their lease space. 
Wall signs shall have letters and logos not to exceed 16 inches in height and not to extend more than 9 inches from the face of the wall. Can you stop there for a moment? Of course. 9 inches is really long. What's the purpose of that? I can't think of a single sign that's, that's backlit or channel lit or halo lit, however you want to call it, that's 9 inches away from the building. A usual channel letter is 3.5 to 4 inches. You would want it to be pinned off from the wall an inch and a half to give the light the a depth, chance to... The depth. Um, and then you need something behind it to consist of, to contain all the wires. I, you've probably heard the term raceway. Mm -hmm. So when we did the math, it seemed that nine inches, giving that the depth of the letter, the space from the raceway, and the raceway itself built into a frame, which I have pictured for mm -hmm. you, um, should be no more than nine inches. So that's to the face of the letter then, not the back the of face, the letter? No, the face of the letter to the wall. Sorry, we okay. I, I read it as the back of the letter to the wall. That's yeah, why. That should be, we should clarify that. Yeah. Yeah. Please go on. I didn't mean to interrupt you, but when I saw nine inches, I was like, whoa, that's pretty, that's pretty far away. So if you're including the depth of the letter itself, then that's why. The design of the primary wall sign should be integrated with and complement the overall design of the facade. Where applicable and appropriate, signs should be centered between architectural elements and columns to allow building architecture to be expressed. So we have chosen from the palette of the Bellafield deep color options and light color options. Where possible, we prefer, of course, the deep background mm -hmm. with light letters, but there may be times where we have to give someone an option depending on their. So uh, page five talks about externally illuminated dimensional letters. This would be where all the light comes from above onto the sign. Um, So the n next page six, I think, gives you a good idea of what we think that that illumination would then look like. And also in proportion to the sign, how large that letter could be. Um, we also have presented the option of uh, halo illuminated reverse channel letters, the ones we were speaking of. Um, which it's not mandatory, but it really does work most effectively when the background is light. So I show it that way because you get the most halo, the most reflection on a light colored surface. We would still want the background to be give the appearance of the hardy board that is used on the property um, and have a nice the nice frame around it I think it they'll look good <coughs> um, so we have the illumination uh, after that and those signs are excellent for a long view where you can see down the street and you see all the all the shops if you're standing to the side if you're driving but we also felt it was really important that pedestrians have the same visibility for the businesses and so we added the projecting blade sign <coughs> We've given guidelines similar to the code that are, uh, it's up to 12 square feet and cannot project more than four feet from the wall 
and the bottom of the sign no lower than eight feet and no higher than 12 feet. I show you a potential bracket. We're hoping to keep them relatively simple. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I also show some pictures of what that type of configuration can look like on a street. <coughs> and some people will need some window signage. They'll need their hours, <coughs> probably on their door, um, a representation of a logo, a way for people to understand the entrance to the business. So we wanted to include that also. Um, we have said that signs placed in windows shall not cover more than 25% of the total transparent glass area of the windows. And we also say that handwritten paper, cardboard, chalk, or whiteboard signs are prohibited. I just want to point out that I'm not sure that if you wanted a door sign, even if it's glass, that that's going to apply. Window signs, I, I'm, not, I'm putting words in Ms. Moss, Ms. Moss's mouth, but window signs usually mean windows. If you want to sign on the door, you should, I believe, maybe supplement this by saying, and you may not want any signs on the doors. Just saying if you, if, if it's a glass portion of your door, that's not necessarily a window, that the whole thing is a door. So you just, just a heads up. And I add here that the 25% is consistent with the rest of the sign code. Okay. Um, do you have any questions or concerns about what I've shared with you? Let me start with my, to my right. Mr. Curcio, any questions or concerns? Uh, no. Mr. Oliver? Uh, just one <coughs> question uh, regarding the projecting blade sign. Mm -hmm. Um, the pictures you use as an example, um, I believe, are from Eastdale. They are. Um, yes. <laughs> just to, for scale purposes, the images, do you know what size those signs are in comparison to uh, what you're proposing? I did not throw a tape measure up, but it did appear to me that they were all within that neighborhood of what we were Okay. Saying. I, I certainly can. Check just, and be just sure. So, uh, you know, because I'm familiar with the site, and obviously we have the pictures right here in front of us. And initially, a uh, four foot by four foot seemed large to me, but seeing it in this uh, image, you know, seems pedestrian friendly. And, and I, I love that idea. I think it, you know, really helps pedestrian traffic, and and it's a nice a nice way to, you know, put a sign on a building, but just wondering the, the scale in comparison to what you're proposing. I will absolutely verify that. Thank you. That's a good point. And three by four is a maximum. If you look in the picture, there's a circle, yeah. which obviously wouldn't be three by four. I mean, one of the things I like about the images here from Eastdale is that they're not all the same yeah. in, in shape. Obviously, that's based on tenant and requirements and their needs. Uh, and some of these, the ones with the I think it's upside down utensils are actually smaller than three by four. But three by four is a maximum that's allowed. So it, you could be smaller, depending on what the tenant wants, et cetera. Thank you, Chris. Ms. Dexter, comments? Um, I wanted to thank you because I'm thinking back to the first iteration of a <laughs> sign design guideline, and we have, again, come so far. And um, it really helps that we've kind of worked through the architecture and kind of the overall feel, because now the signs instead of like designing the community around the signs, the signs now complement the community. Um, so I want to thank you because uh, I, it, it's also reading like a, um, a design manual that, you know, is something we've always, we, we strive, yeah. yes, we've, yeah. we've always envisioned. Um, and so this is really, uh, it's quite clean looking. It looks like it addresses future tenant needs, it addresses the resident <coughs> needs. Um, I really like it. Thank you. Mr. Waters? Um, no, I, I didn't get dive into the manual, so I 
you know, I might come up with some other things, but uh, I did I did recall, and, and maybe you can shed some light on this. There was uh, the wi the winery uh, building had a mural on it, I believe. Does that constitute a sign, or is that? Mm. That's a question for Tad. It's my interpretation. Question. And and if it does, maybe the manual might want to speak about some kind of ghosting signs, you know, like that, that look <laughs> an antique, they're there but they're not, you know, type of thing. Uh, just to address it so that it's not something that, you know, we have to go back and revise the whole thing again. So you're right. It had, uh, it had a vineyard thing and I just, you know, I, I just, before we go down that rabbit hole, do we, do we classify it as art or sign? Well, I, I don't know. That's Ms. Moss's interpretation. And by I the way, was that... I think we, we would look to the definition of a sign in the sign in Chapter 108, because I think the two are supposed to be kind of worked together. Mm -hmm. uh, Agreed. So if, it's, if you don't have a specific design, uh, a specific <coughs> definition, of a sign in your manual, then it would refer back, the definition would refer back to 108. So you might want to check that. So yeah, chapter 24 and under so 108. So right now, if it's, if there's no words and the images are not of a business with a name on it, then it would be art. It's, it's art. It's decorative not a, It's not a sign. So if it's a, painting of a vineyard that's fine but if you start putting you know the name of the vineyard or the name of the business or the name of the particular wine that's served there then that may become Signage. a sign yeah like at, like at the entry the book the barn the sign barn the sign mm -hmm. barn if that was a the Bellafield sim logo ghosted on that barn where it looked like a weathered barn you know that that's that's where it was going that you know there's options and you just want to make sure you cover that basis so that it would have yeah, I think it should be addressed I mean uh, some tenants could ask for this kind especially on corner buildings yeah for yeah I, uh, so restaurants better to address it now. restaurants mm -hmm. especially you know on on you know, on the wall or something you know that is ghosted or antique looking thank you Rob Mr. Veith, comments? Uh, no comment. Okay, so this falls not down to me. I'm just going to, these are not meant criti critically. Just to point out, uh, number one, this is so everyone understands this is just for the village in addition to the barn sign and the wall sign at the location of Dorsey and uh, Nine. The one that I don't believe that we still had an explanation for how we can afford, to, how we can justify that sign because it doesn't comply with our code. And you don't really have anything in here text-wise that says it's just pictorially. Um, there's a couple of little minor spelling errors I'm going to send over to you guys later on, uh, grammatical errors. So you have under allowable sign types on page three, and you mentioned only three signs, Grace, but there's a fourth. Temporarily with a permit, banner sign or menu board sidewalk sign. You don't show illustrations of that anywhere or what you mean. The sidewalks are only five feet wide. You're going to need to show justification, I think, to Tad as to how if you put a menu, a, a sandwich board sign, as they're called, how that's going to be able to be uh, handled for pedestrians, but more importantly, people who uh, are maybe in wheelchairs you have to go around them. You also don't define temporarily or temporary. And our code is 60 days, six, uh, I believe it's 60 days. 60 days in a calendar year. In a calendar year. Uh, and then you don't have anything described here with the permit, if there would be a different permit process or not. A banner sign, you should probably do an illustration for that and give dimensions. Um, I personally think they're T-A-C-K-Y, as we say in the mm -hmm. South. But if that's what your tenants want, then Mr. Mulway will get his banner signs. But you should have some, it can't be 50 feet. Right. You've got to address somehow that banner sign as well. So you've done an excellent job to me of the primary wall, the blade sign, the window signs. But you have you've neglected your temporary signs. Uh, which should be specified in three or two. The reason why I can, I'm going into all this is I was part of the group that we wrote Chapter 24 in the first place to try to liberalize it for businesses way back when. So that's why I'm, I'm trying to think about what Tad needs when she's evaluating something against something in order to give the, the permit. So if you say here's a banner sign, it can be 
two inches or 20 feet, she's going to need some wear in between. Um, and you should define temporary. I, I assume you want the same 60, the same amount. Uh, the, again, we should clarify that the nine inches from the face of the wall really is to the front of the letter, because <laughs> I didn't know. I personally like the color palette you've chosen. Um, I know that for easy visibility, light letters against dark background do it's quick, a quick read because there's not all that negative space. But as you said, when you're doing the halo light lighting, it actually does look better because the light kind of disappears into the back background. So it is better. So you've given people options for what they want, and they can each look different. Um, I'm not sure many people in Hyde Park are hunkering to know that there'll be a Dolce & Gabbana coming. I know that was just a tenant list, but I'm not even sure many people in Hyde Park know what Dolce & Gabbana is. I'll be sure and ask Domenico and Stefano next time I see them. Otherwise, I want to just point out that on the barn sign, and this is important for the board, this is not described dimensionally within the sign code and within the, the proposed sign manual, but your letters on Bellafield are really big. They're 40 inches. I can't think of anything that's 40 inches in this town. I think I can think of it's 40 inches. It's maybe a bed, bath, and beyond the town of Poughkeepsie. I know you assert that this is appropriate for the size of the building, and maybe it is, but I want the board to make sure we weigh in before we actually approve the manual. Again, you've shown a picture where it's a lit up barn. That's probably a one story. This is a two story. So I think you can, you've can. you made the justification when I look at it just sitting here. The letters do look appropriate for the height of the building to me. But we need to remember, this building is not where it was originally proposed. It's been moved very close forward to Route 9. So I just want you to think about bed, bath, think about the bed, bath, and beyond. Well, it's going to be going bankrupt now. But the bed, Thank bath, and beyond that's been at Poughkeepsie. Former. Yeah, former bed, bath, and beyond. Those letters, that building is set way far back, and those letters look really huge. Um, 40, 40 inches is big. I just want everyone to make sure you, you're aware of how large that's going to be, and it might dominate the way it's located now toward Route 9. Mm. And I'm not complaining that the building was moved forward it's because of a stormwater management technique or a pond behind it. I personally think the way the, uh, we'll call it the, way, the road wayfinding sign looks great. From the image, if you want to go back to it, I can't understand. You said it's stone surrounding the, it's a stone wall behind the, the stone wall that lines the road. If you look at the images on either side of the tenant panels, that looks like a waterfall. Uh, is th what, what is that? Um, th they are water features. Ah! Oh! oh. I wasn't wrong. Very How oh. glamorous, I'm going to say. <laughs> so y there's going to be a waterfall going down on each side and then caught and recycled? Yeah. Pretty darn cool, Tom. That was my idea. I <laughs> knew it. I knew it. it sounded like a Tom idea. idea. Because I kept looking at this going, what exactly is this? And it said water feature. I'm like, what does water feature mean? That fake, like, like <laughs> aluminum, but no, real water. Cool. That's, that's a very Tom Mulroy kind of thing. Um, I hardly approve. <laughs> I hope the rest of the board does as well. Does that mean you'd be extending those kinds of, you, where you have your large wayfinding signs throughout the site, you'd have waterfall coming, water elements? It's pretty cool, I think. And then, Victoria, have we have, um, do we do we have um, clarity as to how we approve the second the, the sign? I, I mean, I think we've been discussing the sign not being permitted for by the well, by the code for a long time. So, I mean, I, I they have argued that by including it in the sign manual that you are approving, you are oh, somehow then it is permitted permitting okay. it but I, I, I mean we can have an offline discussion about how you can overcome the there's a restriction on this approval and in the zoning on um, structures within the buffer mm. so uh, I, I think we'll just have to continue that conversation and so we are also by a, so this only addresses this doesn't address entrance signs except for the stone barn it does not address an entrance sign that's located on Dorsey correct or by the sewer entrance plan, correct? Yes, I already know the answer. So right now under Article 24, you're allowed two entrance signs because you are a shopping center in essence. I mean, it's a mixed use shopping center, but it's a shopping center. I believe you're gonna be proposing lots more than just two signs by entrances. You're probably gonna want one, as I said, by the entrance to the, well, I don't wanna say it's the entrance to the wastewater treatment facility. It's an alternative entrance to the north that you'll bypass the wastewater treatment plant, but go into the rest of the site because you're going to have two entrances off nine. You have the Dorsey entrance and you're, you're likely going to want entrances or signs to the corner property as well as signs 
on St. Andrews that leads in. So I, I was just going to say, can can you add? Isn't this now the time? Since it, even though this is just phase two, wouldn't there be a time to add sort of as a preface that there would be additional entrance signs? Well, I'm trying to help. I mean, I, wouldn't they just fall under the road wayfinding signs? Or I guess you should. No, you're talking about. You're, I assume you want a well, Belfield sign. Up, uh, a, a question that I was asked. So now that the sign manual is, you know, we're we're, we're getting through it. Um, this would be the basis for design on the hotel, right? So the hotel mm -hmm. signage and all of that. So. Where is the hotel signage going to go? Right now, you'd be allowed a wall sign and a, and a projecting sign and a sandwich board sign. Okay, so a wall sign. And what was the other one? Projecting sign. Projecting sign. Okay. A blade sign. And window signs, okay. or a blade sign and a window sign, but that's all you'll be allowed. Okay, so we wouldn't be allowed uh, directional signage. Oh, no, the okay. tenant, it could be one of your tenants. Yeah, it'll say, tenant it'll say the end of Belfield. But um, if you're talking about a, a freestanding sign that says, like uh, that's coming up from the ground, I don't. Where would it go? Yeah. Where, I mean, what are you thinking? Well, it's the hotel that's thinking. So. so <laughs> no, but I right. Mean, they, well, it's on their own parcel. When you when you drive into its own entrance. When, when you drive yeah. into a hotel, you'll see yeah. you know these low monument signs Monument. that will say, you know, the residence in or, or the inn at Belfield, that kind of thing. So they want it though, not at the main entrance off no, nine, no, but no. at the yeah. entrance to Within their within the property of the hotel. The question is, so are you talking about a directional, I mean, a wayfinding it's sign? It's or its well, own yeah. lot, so it can have its own monument sign, potentially. But I think we just need to see it okay, and we'll evaluate it. We'll include it in, in this. Because yeah. I'm trying to tell you, get more stuff in here that you're yep. going to need. That, yep. that's <laughs> but, uh, believe me, I, I went through this as fast as I could, because Kelly, I didn't realize, I was in the hospital last week, everybody else knows. I didn't realize we already had the sign manual because I have about a thousand emails after missing them for just two days. Um, but the more we have in here, the easier it's going to be to prove everything. Yep, we'll get it yeah, in there. I think, you know, I, I'm, I'll send some notes when, once I go through it. I think I'd like to see some overarching language about how this works with the other sign, with okay. the town sign law. So in the event of a conflict, which one takes precedence? If something's not addressed here, do we go back to okay. the sign? So. Um, one thing that comes up is an issue in a lot of communities right now are businesses putting up these internally illuminated open signs, you know, like the old neon style signs. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if you object or care, but it's something you need to anticipate that uh, your coffee shop's going to want to put up an open sign. And so are you allowing internally illuminated open signs in your window or only vinyl decals? Mm -hmm. It's it's just for, it's it things difference. for you to think about. Okay. But okay. If Ted has, to give a, yeah, Ted has to give a permit for it, then she needs to say, okay, here's where it says this, and I can do it. Okay. Okay. You've done a great job, I want to say, oh, I know. compared to what the first one was, which was just mm -hmm. pictures, this is a great job. Yeah. Um, I just want to make sure that it, it's, it's broad enough to encompass all that, you're, all that okay. will be the needs. Broad enough and, and also specific enough so that it, it prevents things from messing with the look. Right. Well, like you have the know this, know that, know this for your window signs. So, yes, Bonnie. So, this is for phase two, which includes residential as well. So, is this intended to only cover the commercial, or are you going to need any freestanding monument signs, something that identifies residential buildings? I asked that question at the last meeting, and they said no. Okay. So, yeah, I, but we're definitely going to get more stuff in there. I mean, the hotel, you know, the, the whole branding thing is, is, being uh, defined and selected, and it's really, really good. And so we start pulling that in here uh, as well. Are, are your freestanding wayfinding signs lit? Oh, we have a light from the top down. A light above each panel, or just on the top of the structure? Oh. Yeah, it's not on. It's page 15, but I don't okay. see it on the thing. Okay, on the on the main wall one, it's on the top. One these, of the these don't seem to have 15. Yeah, these, these don't seem to have any lighting. One of the uh, features of the existing sign code is a section of signs that are exempt from permit as long as you meet a criteria. I don't see that in here, and you might want to do that, oh. such as the neon, not internally lit, but neon specifically, two or three square foot sign on the inside of a window. That's if you that want that. That may be that. something that 
doesn't yeah. require a permit, can't flash. Um, but only up to a certain size. Only maybe. up to a certain size. Right. Another thing to consider is you may have businesses that don't want glass windows and people looking in. I seem to have businesses in town that want to plaster their windows and cover them so people can't see in. That's the non-retail uses, as I recall. Uh, service. Yeah. Personal service. Nail oh, salons like an and yeah, security. Tattoo parlors and massage parlors. Tattoo parlors. <laughs> yep. Do we have some very high artistic yes, these days. Yeah, very. <laughs> I didn't know that. I know we have tattoo removal, but I know we have a tattoo parlor or two. Okay. We do. Just something to, to add. I was thinking about as the uh, sub development or uh, subdivision comes forward and we're uh, giving each lot its own opportunity to have a monument sign yeah. is there some sort of language you guys should put in the uh, sign manual that it will we'll, we'll help you in both you know on both sides of that yeah, you know so that tenants don't get the idea that they can you know they're entitled to something that you may not want in your development and vice versa for the uh, you know residential areas maybe that would be a good place for it and like just good, some sort of a you know a boundary you know it. for a city winery or for the hotel anything that's a large standalone on its own lot that seems to argue that you would have a, a you know a monument sign for them but if you're gonna have multiple tenants in one long building <coughs> if you're gonna have a monument sign you, that's kind of crazy you're gonna have sign pollution like crazy plus clutter everywhere but so neighborhood signs though I mean are we Neighborhood signs would not be allowed the way you've written the code. You wouldn't be able to have a sign that says the Crescent. <laughs> because it's not a commercial, it's, it wouldn't be a commercial sign. And the Crescent isn't in the village. No, but I'm just saying, it couldn't even say right. the village. There may be, I don't know if you want to have that, like neighborhood signs. Miss Whitman suggested um, maybe putting in a note that for monument sa signs on individual lots like that are created moving forward um, put in language requiring site plan approval because that would make it so that the tenants don't automatically think they're going to get something and also we can talk about the location right we haven't looked at any of these there's no placeholders locations. for monument signs right. on the overall site plan right right each phase mm -hmm. has to come in separately yeah. they may so have a I know we're seeming picky in but a lot of stuff to consider. They have been dealing with sign code here for 17 years. And that <laughs> we always say we hate signs. We don't hate the signs. We love the signs. It's the sign code. Because it's sort of one size fits a few in some cases. Um, so that's all. Also, did your, those tenant panels that you have, another thing you're about, with just, you've shown them just as letters, but a lot of tenants like to put logos or pictures. And is that going to be allowed? And For the wayfinding signs, our idea was to keep um, to keep the one font that's and simple the yeah. Bella field it, it it does make it easier for everyone to be able to read yeah. everything yeah. that they're looking yeah. for well, you particularly put that, the driving put that in so that it's clear that it will be one font and also then you don't have to fight with your tenants because because it will have been there. you'll say this right. is what how we're approved well, those are directional signs to wayfind. They, they don't need to have local. Well, never mind. <laughs> branding. Look at our, look branding. Which they. And then, as far as the individual wall signs, again, like you showed Pottery Barn, Dolce and Gabbana, just as black and white. But if there's opportunity for logos, you know, is there a space within which they have to fit? Um, there is a height for letters and logos. Okay. Mean, there's a maximum that will fit 16 in that inches band. 16 yeah. inches but it may not I don't think 16 inches is going to fit in for a logo we'll see Dep depends. if 10 does no what I should say by that I mean is is that if your depends on the logo if the logo is only 10 foot high but three feet wide you're not going to have room for a logo and maybe that's what they want like Starbucks yeah I, think I, I mean I would not want to tell a business that if they're known by their logo, they can't use their logo. Don't worry, we can do that. Oh, well, all right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it just, it seems to me that if that's, if that's the sign that they feel is going to give their business the best representation, 
I don't know that you want to say no they can't oh we're not it's it's, it's up to you to put in there yeah. by the way you, you only have height for the letters you should probably also put width and for the logo and put a width what is the process for a business that looks at the sign manual and says we just can't fit our giant you know W um, within these parameters is it a variance is it come back to the planning board yeah, is, what it, is it what how do mm. I would think it's a variance okay well we if should just be clear on do we define that in this? I think it should be clear so when we go to read it in the future we have a section that says what happens and you know Grace you're right I'm thinking about little lemon when I see those signs, the little lemon is actually written very small. It's that logo that they have that they kind of show over and over again. You're right. Some businesses are better known by the logos. That logo doesn't mean anything to me, but because I'm just used to seeing it with the little lemon sign by it. Uh, so I'm, I'm not a logo person to to identify, except for maybe the Exxon Mobil ones and Tony the Tiger from way back when when I was a kid. <laughs> Sorry. The BP dinosaur. Anyway. <laughs> And the VP dinosaur, <laughs> Sinclair. <laughs> that was Sinclair and the dinosaur. I got news for you. So any other comments from consultants right now? I know Ted hasn't had a chance to review this, so once she does, she'll have uh, Yes, Bonnie. So I was just going to say with the fonts, we have a maximum, but is there a minimum for font sizes? Because you always have those businesses decide they want to put a lot of information on a sign, and they might want to put a phone number, and then other things more than just even these They've are nice and chic because they seem to have one because this is because this is private there's private roads private everything they actually if you read through this they allow they tell you what's allowed on it no telephone numbers allowed you have drawn from our code the name of the business ideograms some other stuff on there but they don't allow telephone numbers no sales prices stuff like that um, they, they, uh, grace and crew who worked on this, you, you did look at what Tad said, but also looked at our Article 24, our own sign code, and kind of, you know, did a good mashup of it. I just want to make sure that there's enough in it, there's enough meat on the bones that it doesn't stop anything down the line, because once we get this built, and Tom and Larry are booking their tenants, we want to make sure they come in here and get their signs fast. So this is, in other words, this is a, a front-loading project where you front-load it now with the details, and then it makes it easier and faster later on. And we found that that works really well. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It works really well. So any other comments from anybody on the sign manual right now? Then if you guys can get to work a little bit. Um, uh, Do you want us to so we'll wait for Tad's comments? Oh, yeah. I think you, I think you should. Tad, should they go ahead and get started now making revisions? <laughs> Poor Tad. <laughs> the answer to that is, is go ahead and start getting made. Go ahead and start. Because I think once we, after our discussion tonight, when Ted reviews it, when you add more, she'll probably review it again. If there's anything left, she'll tell you to fine tune it. Okay. That's well. That's what I thought. Sorry. <laughs> so. I, I was also thinking that if you choose to reference the the chapter article 24, you could reference prohibited signs. Signs that are prohibited are defined in article 24. Oh yeah. Um, or you could do your own list or you could modify that list um, some things that businesses seem to want and I don't know how the board feels are the open flags with the striping and then the word open in the middle and they're in a flag holder oh off yeah. at an angle yeah. they're not allowed in town because they flap I don't know if you would allow them things that just some things that other that businesses want. I'm that thinking Eastdale, they're not going to have any flags that say open over there. By the way, okay. you get there and some things aren't open. I'm not sure Daffodils has been open any time I've been there so far, uh, the gift shop. But other stores have been. So, uh, But when you're in this kind of urban environment that they're creating, I'm not sure you need big flapping signs that say open. That tends to be standalone stores like Antique or whatever. Uh, but at any rate, it's a great start. And we'll get this down to where it'll make it easier for you and Tad to utilize in the future. Because, and by the way, when Tab is mentioning like the neon signs in a window, typically what we have here in, in our town is restaurants, that, you know, some thing, some beer, or some whatever. Uh, that, that's what's used. But I haven't seen any neon sign in a retail store uh, except for maybe that's a service store with our dry cleaners. Um, but you may, if you're going to talk about neon signs, I. I can't imagine Tom's going to want those in every window, so you might want to think more clearly about where those would be allowed, save for, 
say for a bar or speakeasy or a restaurant that serves, I don't know, whatever. Um, but that's up to you guys. Right now, a neon sign wouldn't be allowed because it's not listed in here as a material. So, in in the residential district, you know, do you want dog park signs? Do you want community board mm. that would be allowed? I mean, there's lots of trail signs. Well, this is the, the let's. Yeah. I, I don't want them to. I don't want them to bite off so much that they can't chew, because yeah, this true. is for phase two. When you get to other areas, you can keep on adding based on experience. But I want to make sure that we get through phase two so it's easy for you because this is the most important phase, I think, for you once you get it going because these are your initial tenants that will then therefore create the, the path forward for everybody else to come follow. So anything else from anybody? Okay, thanks for a lovely discussion, everybody. Yeah, thank, you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. We'll see you again shortly. Uh, very shortly. Yes, very shortly. <laughs> Actually, just stay there. Just stay there. <laughs> <laughs> say Grace uh, can the next Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> You're trapped, Grace. You cannot leave. The next item on the agenda is the Inn at Bellafield. This is the applicants who requested a site plan waiver for the lighting fixture changes. This was discussed at the last meeting. Members of the board had no issues with it because the pools, etc., are all very similar and the lighting values are the same. So we are prepared to have a we have a resolution tonight for Vice Chair Dexter to introduce. But any other comments in advance? Yes. I just want to uh, make <coughs> sure I'm clear with Tad on how yeah. she wants to represent the, the accepted alternative. Do you want me to staple it into the approved set? You know, It's a waiver, so do you want this? How do you want these shown into the approved plan set? Last time you were gone, so we discussed having it added into the signed plan set. Signed plan set. If this is a waiver, would that be acceptable? That was easy. And Good. then if we revise the plan at some point in the future, those could be added in total, formally. Added in okay. Okay. Any other comments or questions? Ms. Dexter. Resolution to waive the requirements of site plan approval for the Inn Bellfield lighting alteration. Resolution number 2017-040. Whereas, 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 now, therefore, be resolved that the plan board hereby re reaffirms its prior negative declaration, determining that the lighting amendments will not result in any significant adverse environmental impacts. Be it further resolved that upon the recommendation of the zoning administrator, the planning board hereby determines that the proposed modifications to the approved site plan, as shown on the revised lighting details plan, are minor and grants the waiver request pursuant to section 108-9.4C2 of the zoning law. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any nays or abstentions? Just one absent. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. And thanks. Thank you. Thanks for all your Thank patience you. tonight. Thank you. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is. Wait. Is I skipped ahead. I believe we're setting a public hearing. Yes, Jeffrey Groves Estates will need an extension of the time in which to complete construction. This requires a public hearing, uh, something we can just grant automatically. So make it a motion to set a public hearing for May 17th. So moved. Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 That motion carries. Next item on the agenda is a site plan waiver request. This is for a covered front and rear porch at 24 Lane. It is in the scenic area statewide significance. Um, but it is not visible directly from either one of the historic sites or the river. Anybody have any questions? And we have the recommendation from Ms. Moss. Mr. Waters, this is yours. Yes. Um, let's see. Uh, site plan waiver, uh, resolution 2023-17 for Margaret O'Neill, whereas a request for a site plan waiver has been made to the Town of High Park Planning Board by Margaret O'Neill to construct the exp and expand a front porch and expand cover yeah. and enclose an existing rear deck and whereas, 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 therefore be it resolved that the Town of Hyde Park Planning Board hereby waive site plan requirements for the proposed changes as described in the request for the waiver of the site plan received by the Planning Department on March 29, 2023, and in the building permit application dated March 17, 2023.
Second. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion carries. Next on the agenda is another site plan waiver request. This is for an HVAC mini splits located at 36 Volkill Drive. This is actually near the ERVK site, uh, with Eleanor Roosevelt's Volkill sites. This is why this is an also in a scenic area statewide significance. Um, it is not necessarily view viewable from, from the other site, nor is it vi visible from Top Cottage. Um, FTR's private retreat. Anybody have any questions on this? Mr. Gercio, this is up for you. Uh, Bonnie Eisman, 36 Falk Hill Drive, on <coughs> site plan waiver, town code section 108-9.4C2, date May 3rd, 2023, resolution 2023-27. Whereas a request for site plan waiver has been made to the Town of High Park Planning Board by Ms. Eisman to install HVAC, HVAC mini split systems on property associated with Single family home requiring a building permit, whereas, 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 whereas. Therefore, be it resolved that the Town of High Park Planning Board hereby waive site plan requirements for the proposed changes as described in the request for a waiver of site plan received by Planning Department on April 28, 2023, in the, in the building permit application dated April 20, 2023. Second. Any further discussion? Everybody in, please say aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Next time on the agenda is Andre Long, another site plan waiver request for the same thing, HVAC mini splits. This is located at 529 River Road in Statsburg. This is in a SAS as well. However, it's not visible from the Hudson River. Anybody have any questions? Mr. Veith. Uh, Andrea Long, 529 River Road, site plan waiver, resolution 2023-28. Request for a site plan waiver has been made to the Town of High Park Planning Board by Ms. Long to install HVAC mini split systems on the property associated with a single family home requiring a building permit. Mm -hmm. And whereas, 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 therefore be it resolved that the Town of High Park Planning Board waives site plan requirements for the proposed changes as described in the request for a waiver of site plan received by the planning board on April 28, 2023, and in the building department application dated April 19, 2023. Second. Thank you, any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. <coughs> Next item on the agenda is one more of those ever popular HVA mini splits. <laughs> This is located at 20 Rogers Place. Uh, this is also in the SAS, but it's not visible from the historic sites nor directly from the river with the recommendation from Ms. Moss. Anybody have any questions? I'll take this resolution. Whereas a request, for, oh, excuse me, site plan waiver town code section 108-9.4C2, resolution 2023-29. Whereas a request for site plan waiver been made to the Town of High Park Planning Board by Carrie DeGroteed to install Mitsubishi heat pump mini splits on the existing single family home and whereas whereas now therefore be resolved the town of Pipe park planning board hereby waive site plan requirements for the proposed changes as described in the request for a waiver of site plan received by the planning department on may 1st 2023 and the building department application dated april 8th 2023 second any further discussion all in favor please say aye aye, aye. aye. motion carries unanimously i believe that brings us to an adjournment yeah making a motion to adjourn so moved second all in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you, colleagues on the board. Thank you, consultants. And thank you, as always, uh, Town Board, for providing the resources to so televise this meeting. Me. Yes. And thank you, Tony. And thank you, Tony. No